Eh hey, rafiki yangu. Wewe habari yako? We are entering a city within the city. It's not a physical place. It has no borders. It's rather an hallucination inhabited by tens of thousands of kids. A dark, obscure and brutal place hidden inside many plastic bottles. If you open them and sniff what's inside, you'll wake up in a world of zombies. This is the story of the zombies of Nairobi. This is one of Nairobi's many dump sites. This place is surreal. If you were here now, you would feel the smell of shit and trash piled up throughout the years. Our journey into the city of zombies starts here. The desperate who live in this place obsessively inhale the fumes of a yellow liquid that they carry around everywhere. They're intoxicated. They're hungry. Nini nini. Glue. Na itafanya nini? Kama utavuta glue. Itafanya nini? Team like mrevi. Kwa nini unatumia gamu? Stress nyingi. Stress ya 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 nini? Maisha. Lakini maisha ni mashida za hope. Anja. Kuna ukivuta lazima ukue na morali ya kazi na mentality na kwanza inapotea ile ya njaa. We climb on top of the garbage hill where other guys scavenge trash piles next to a group of marabouts. It's like walking on the back of a foul-smelling monster that occupies the center of a neighborhood inhabited by a number of animals, insects, bacteria, and human beings who make a living collecting stuff on top of it. None of them walk without their glue. <laughs> Many of them are so dazed that they experience brain blackouts, passing out for a few minutes. Unasikia nini? Eh? Unasikia nini? The solvents inside the glue can cause effects similar to a hangover. It's a depressant substance that can cause loss of concentration and lack of coordination. But it can also induce hallucinations and transform you into a very hostile and aggressive person. The guys around us are friendly, but also very unstable. What happened to you? This huh? knife. 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 My friend, I took somebody guy money. Na chukua na yaka kumfuko yangu. Ana ni nyanganya, ni nyanganya. Situ naanza kupi. One euro and a half are enough just for something to eat once a day and for a quarter of a bottle of glue, one of the most popular drugs among Kenya's 300,000 homeless children. 60,000 of them live here in Nairobi. We're going to show you how easy it is to buy glue in Nairobi in a slum. This is Evans, he's 13 years old, he's been sniffing glue for so many years already. There's a shoemaker over there, he's going to go and get it and come back. The boy walks inside the shack and moments later, there he is. See now he's got it, he's bought it for 20 shillings, look at it, very easy. We empty his bottle and let him Sorry. go. Okay, Asante. Aware of the fact that he's going to get some more glue within a few minutes. What's absurd is that everything happens in broad daylight. The slums are full of shoemakers who don't care about making a few bucks selling glue to street children. See, even when the evidence is there, they deny it. Now 
Like many African metropolises, Nairobi is a city that wears you out. Millions of people survive on an economy of small things, of old, second-hand and patched up stuff. Welcome to the world below a dollar a day. If you make it, good for you. Otherwise, it's your fucking problem. And once the youth sees opportunities being stripped from them day after day, you know what might come next. Violence. This is a tunnel in Nairobi where a gang of robbers lives. They use mainly knives and machetes. This is an injury. Why were you fighting? I fight for my life. What do you do for a living? Nairobi's underground tunnels are full of desperate kids. This guy who lost his right arm in an accident pulls out a plastic bottle. Like this one. The liquid inside it is transparent. It looks like water, but it's not. It's a toxic inhalant that has become very popular here over the past few years. It's called Mafutandege, jet fuel. It's composed by hydrocarbons, especially kerosene, plus chemical additives such as icing inhibitors to make sure the fuel doesn't freeze at the low temperatures above 30,000 feet. It's highly toxic and very, very cheap. In the southeastern suburbs, not far from Yomo Kenyatta Airport, it has become the drug of choice for many street children who seek a quick relief from stress and anxiety. It's sufficient to just pour some liquid on a small rag and inhale it, to be immediately hit by a rapid sequence of dizziness, vertigo and hallucinations. Yet exactly like Lou, it lasts only for a few minutes. In order to get a lasting effect, the young jet fuel junkies need to sniff hundreds of times a day. Cardiovascular collapse and respiratory distress are the most common consequences. Not to mention the frequent brain blackouts, which can cause devastating damage. This boy is so stoned that basically he just fell and he, he, he hit his head. So, who's this dealer hiding in the area of Mlango Kubwa? After a few phone calls, we are told where he lives. We are entering now Mlango Kubwa, one of the most dangerous areas in Nairobi and one of the most dangerous in Africa. Another reason to be careful is that a number of Islamist militants with the Al-Shabaab group live here. At the end of the road, there is a small square where a group of boys and girls bizarrely stares at us. They look lost. This is an area where a lot of drug addicts meet. Most of these kids sniff glue and, and some of them use jet fuel as well. Okay, let's go, let's go. Their dealer lives in this barrack, and once inside, we're stunned. We find ourselves face to face with an old polyomyelitic who shows us his best merchandise, jet fuel. He tells us he gets it from intermediaries who steal it from the airport or the companies producing it. Ah, 60. 60 shillings. 60 shillings. This one. I know that Kitambu is going to be a gum. But I think it's a metal. How many children come here to buy? Every day, I mean. More than a hundred. What's the point of selling this if you know that it damages children so much? You're not afraid that police will come and arrest you? you bribe them with 500. Then they go away. Aluda! Aluda! 
Once out of his barrack, we find ourselves in a waking nightmare. What's freaking us out is that it really feels like being surrounded by zombies. Guys who have gone mad and who try to talk to us, even though it's impossible to understand what they're saying. We feel very, very uneasy. Ambo vipi? Hii ni mtoto wako? Wherever we look, we see eyes at half mast, lips sucking from bottles, catatonic or hostile expressions. What about to us, until Mark, our guide through this living hell, warns us. We have to go. We have to go? Why? No, no cameras. I'm seeing a different movement. I think we have to go now because the situation is getting out of hand. So we need to leave. Wait, wait. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. 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 Sorry. Let's go, let's go. We follow his instructions and we walk away, a bit shaken by the place we've just seen. These kids are unpredictable. Some of them follow us. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, wait. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Easy, 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 easy. Easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Let's go, let's move the car now, please. Nairobi is full of zombie towns like Mlango Kubwa. This is Kayole, another junkie area where many street children meet. Among them, there are many single mothers. She's sniffing that stuff and at the same time I'm wondering how is she going to take care of this baby. The young boys and the girls are given the clue to sleep. So the mom can go out and loiter, look for men to fuck them and give them money. Nowhere to sleep, nowhere to eat, nowhere nothing. Look the way he looks like. Look at He's pregnant. She don't have a That's what no way. It is almost impossible to raise a child with no husband, no family, no help, no home, no money, and an obsessive solvent addiction. Many of these kids end up wandering around like stray dogs. Steve is one of them. Mama yako anajua kwamba wewe unavuta misi. Ah uh ah. -uh. Lakini, eh? Ali ali nipatanga siku moja, nikagogo kama mnyama. Nikaskidil, nikahopa. Steve and his friends survive collecting trash. Once they've got enough, they sell it for a few shillings to some intermediaries who then sell it back to bigger collecting centers. With a few coins he made, he and his friends can get themselves some stuff. The moment later, there he is, with a bottle of jet fuel in his hand. Good. When you're only 11 years old, the word consequence isn't part of your vocabulary yet. Intoxicating yourself with kerosene is just a game like any other. This is my microphone. Lakini I don't to name Lakini I don't want to name Mimi, 
ni mbaya sana. Ya mara kwanza ndio mduko ho lakini uki, ukivuta mara mbili ya tatu eh inakuwa mzuri. Kuja bezi yetu ndio kufundisha hadi kuchamba. Kids like Steve grew up in an unstable and violent environment where theft, fight and prevarication are constantly all around you. And if you get hurt, no one gives a shit. Umefanya nini hapa? Mimi iko bondo na gari. Uh, umeenda daktari? Sijaenda. Kwa nini? Sina pesa. Without money, you have to make do because this city doesn't give you anything. It just takes and takes and takes. Especially when you meet some of the many corrupt cops standing at the side of the road. All they want is your money. It's from them that Steve and his friends must hide when the sun goes down. In order to find them, we have to go and look in the slums. We are in the outskirts of Nairobi and this is one of the areas where street children come and sleep. Now, umefanya miwaka mingapi katika barabara? Katika barabara? Miaka mitatu, maisha mabaya. Najua tena bezi ni kubaya. Eh? Mhm. Watu wanapigana na machupa. Juu unaweza kufia, unaweza kufia kwa bezi ama ushikwe. Unalala wapi? It's really unbelievable. I mean, he's sleeping in, a, in this very small tunnel like an army of rats. Street children sneak into these tunnels to spend the night. No one cares about them, except an Italian organization called Amani, which has been active for years all over Nairobi to provide hundreds of kids at least two hot meals a week. The luckiest of them get a golden opportunity too. A chance to get away from streets, glue and jet fuel and build their own future. A boy like Steve doesn't go unnoticed. He's young, smart and he's got potential. And most importantly, Chemical solvents haven't messed with his brain yet. Therefore, Amani has decided to make him an offer. To move into the Kivuli Center, where tens of young boys and girls like him are rescued, fed, and sent back to school. Mhm. Mhm. Da vent'anni a questa parte siamo in Kenya per sostenere progetti sociali per il recupero dei bambini di strada. Io quando vado a vedere i bambini di strada la prima cosa che mi viene da pensare è che non c'è futuro. Nel momento in cui i bambini entrano nel centro e mangiano e hanno tutto ciò che gli serve per vivere, eh, lasciano anche con una certa facilità l'uso delle droghe. Conosco molti di loro che oggi lavorano, hanno studiato, sono arrivati fino all'università e oggi per esempio uno di loro da che sniffava colla o sniffava carburante per aerei, oggi per esempio lavora in banca. Non è che tu mi hai, cura se non hai una cosa che ti piace, non è che tu non hai una cosa che ti piace, non è che tu non hai una chance, non è che tu non hai una chance. Many other children can be rescued from the streets and from Nairobi's devastating liquid drugs. The NGO Amani for Africa takes care of them. We have witnessed how they work in the field. If you want to help out, you can make a donation. Here is how you can find them. <laughs>